Hey there, Droya here, and welcome to this tutorial where I shall be showing you how to set up and use Skyvector directly within your Microsoft Flight Simulator. So Skyvector is a tool used by both simmers and real world pilots alike, which gives you up to date air information around waypoints, airports, frequencies, all that kind of stuff. And so it's a very useful tool in setting up flight plans and setting up your own routes, especially when it comes to GA, but it can be used for jetliners as well. And so, the purpose of this tutorial will be showing you how to set up this mod and how you can use it for your own benefit within Microsoft Flight Simulator, especially when compared to the defaults of the FR map. Installation of Skyvector is nice and simple and only requires two steps. Firstly, head down to the description where you'll come to this GitHub link, and this is called the MSFS 2020 Toolbar Window Template. And so as you scroll down, you can see the screenshot in use, which shows the Skyvex map being in use. And so, nice and simple, if you head over to Code, downloads as a zip file, and when a pop-up opens up, just click on Open or Save, and it will now download onto your local hard drive. You can open the file, and just like that, it downloads the file into your local system. And now, just like any Microsoft Flight Sim mod, what you're going to do is come and look for the community and official folders, so this will be where you've installed the Flight Sim 2, in my case it's C Games Microsoft Flight Simulator. However, this will differ on the default location, whether it's on the Microsoft Store or Steam Edition, which are now both on screen. So head into your community folder, and what you want is this file here, fs-base-ingamepanels-custom. Drag that into the community folder, and just like that, you've now installed the Skyvector panel into the simulator. Now compared to the default VFR map with the Microsoft Flight Simulator, while this does give you some basic information about airspaces and airways, it's not nearly as much as what Skyvector gives you. And so I would highly recommend you actually head over to the COG, scroll down to the VFR map, and disable it. To activate Skyvector, you then head to the top and just click on the Skyvector button to open the menu on here. Now there are three different modes to Skyvector. You have the High Altitude Airways, the Low Altitude Airways, and the VFR map. And so, depending on what you're flying, you'll use different map options. However, in terms of looking into VFR and figuring out how this all works, it's not too difficult to get your mind over. So, airports are highlighted by these blue rings, and if you zoom in, you'll be able to see the runway in the middle of that, the direction of its heading. Major cities and areas where population live are highlighted in yellow and mountain ranges and hills are populated by this lateral mapping, and so the brighter it is, the higher the mountains are. In terms of the airways, both low and high are using similar methods, where airways are highlighted by lines, and have waypoints either five letters, or in some cases three letters in length, we find in airports. You'll be able to figure out where you're going, you've got your different airways, based on the arrows here, so in this case Yankee 71 is the Airway heading from Adgun to Akuvu. And likewise, it may take a bit of practice to get your head over, but ultimately, it's not too difficult and is very useful when learning how to learn real world maps and flight sim. In terms of finding out waypoints as well, for example, we can search for the Mika points, click on go. What we'll then do is jump you to exactly where that waypoint is. So, for example, Mika is just over here. Switch over to one of the low actually map to see Mika a bit more clearer. And we can see that it's not too far from Hamamatsu, just to the west of that. Also, just to the east of Okinawa. And so, in terms of figuring out where you are in the world, you can touch waypoints, such different points. For example, if we now search for Asano, you can see it jumps us over to the Asano waypoint, which is just to the east of Shodo, and just to the west of Itami. So it's a very useful tool in terms of figuring out where in the world you are and planning out different routings. And it's just a much better tool than the default VFR map as a whole. Now while it is a very good tool at what it does, there is one small thing you should probably be made aware of, and that is that when you type in certain waypoints, for example, let's go for finger, F-I-N-G-A, you'll notice that it reset the camera when I pressed I, 
opens the nav lock, and I press N, lowers the landing gear, and that tights in G, and then pressing A also moves the camera as well. So I would highly recommend either one of two things. Let's uh, raise landing gear again, close the menu. Either disable the keyboard or use showcase camera. As now, we can first press N as many times as you want, go to the nav lock, press G as many times as you want won't slow the landing gear, so either disable your keyboard or use the showcase camera and that's why it won't affect your flights in any way as I found out the hard way myself. And so I think that pretty much covers everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, it explains the basics of Sky Vector and how you can use it with Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I hope that it too gives you a basic overview too on the different features that you can get with it. So for example the low altitude and high altitude airways and waypoints as well as the full VFR map, which, while the default sim 1 is good, this is so much better in terms of information displays and how it benefits that, both in the sim and real world navigation. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then please do consider leaving a like, do also subscribe as well if you haven't done so already. Thank you very much again for the support you've shown me recently, it's been truly outstanding. Likewise, if nobody else who's also looking to try and improve their flights and experience with either more realistic maps or more realistic features, then do consider very quick... Do, uh, do consider sharing this tutorial as well, as I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who will find a benefit in this video as well. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, you ca take care of yourselves, you take care of yourselves, I'll just see you again in the very near future. Take care, and goodbye. <laughs>